So over the years, we have seen many different clone console systems get released. I can remember the original Retron NES clone systems that came out years and years ago, like back in 2013 or something. And since then, we've seen quite a few occur over the years. We've seen NES, Super NES, Sega Genesis, and of course, the higher end FPGA clone systems from companies like Analog and of course, things like the Mister. There's also the mini consoles that have seemingly kind of gone out of fashion in recent times, but we had systems like the PlayStation Classic. We also had systems like the Turbo Graphics Mini as well. But there's one system that has never had a clone console and indeed has never had a mini system, and that is the Nintendo 64. Now, back in 2019, you may remember that there was a press release from Hyperkin and some buzz around a N64 clone console that they were developing. And I made a video on this at the time, and I talked about the clone console itself and the emulation that it ran and some of the concerns that I had at the time. Now, to be very clear, any clone console system out there is going to be using some form of emulation. And the Hyperkin clone N64 system appeared to have significant Nintendo 64 emulation issues, specifically around things like frame buffer emulation that I pointed out. Now, back in 2019, I never got a chance to check out that Hyperkin system at E3, but it doesn't matter because that system never came out. And fast forward to today, almost December of 2021, Finally, after years of waiting, it looks like we're getting our first ever Nintendo 64 clone system, and it's coming through the system known as the Polymega. Today's episode is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. If you have a certain skill set that you want to learn more about, you can sign up and join the classes and get started, or just browse and look at the thousands of classes that are available. Each class is separated into smaller lessons, so you can easily recap and resume the classes that you are currently on. Now for me, outside of my YouTube channel, my biggest passion is music production, none of which I've had any formal training. And Brian Knapp's Intro to Digital Audio Recording Learn the Basics of Reaper DAW class is a fantastic way to get started and learn all about DAWs, how they work, how to record tracks, adding MIDI tracks, mixing and mastering your songs. It's a fantastic beginner course and I thoroughly recommend it. Now Skillshare has an amazing offer on right now as we are approaching the holidays. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. So go ahead and click on that link and once again I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's episode. So if you are not familiar with the Polymega, it's an all-in-one retro clone console system that has been in development for many years and I've covered it on the channel myself. And after many delays, presumably due to COVID-19, silicon and parts shortages, the system has finally shipped in the hands of customers. Now the base system only allowed for CD-based emulation of systems such as the Sony PS1, Neo Geo CD, Sega CD, Sega Saturn, and TurboGrafx CD. But it's the cartridge-based add-on modules that enable support for systems such as the NES, Super NES, Sega Genesis, 32X, and TurboGrafx-16. Now, PlayMagic, which is the company behind the Polymega, has just announced a new add-on module for Nintendo 64, and this is effectively the first N64 clone system on the market. Now, according to the Nintendo Life article, the demand was high for Nintendo 64 games on the system, and I think that actually makes sense. Now, these add-on cartridge modules cost $79.99 in the US, and presumably the N64 one will cost the same amount of money. Now, these modules themselves don't really do much. All the work is done in the main Polymega console itself via the operating system, but it does allow you to plug in your cartridge and play. You can also dump the game onto the internal Polymega's hard disk and play without requiring the original game cartridge as well. Now, just with any clone system, the N64 add-on will be using emulation. Now, when Nintendo Life asked Polymega about what emulator was being used, they didn't really offer a direct answer and they said the following, part of our licensing and development co-development process is ensuring that nearly all games can be played without further configuration or set up by the user and that you can plug in a legitimate cartridge and controller and play without any hassle. 
plugin flipping, configuration, and so on. So when this module is released, it will employ the best legal solution we can provide while hitting the same minimum 90% compatibility that we have for our CD BIOS solutions and other game systems. The specifics will be released a little later before launch. So what is the main takeaway here? Well, it's indeed using a licensed emulator that already exists. They are clearly not developing their own because that would probably take, well, not probably, it would take many, many years to build your own N64 emulator from scratch. And there's already existing emulators out there. But the question is, what emulator is it using? Now, many people would just say, well, it's probably using Mupin 64 Plus because that is very popular. It's quite compatible and it's open source. But the problem with Mupin 64 Plus is it's GPL2, which would require PlayMagi, the company behind Polymega, to disclose source code if requested, which they would be obligated to do. So perhaps they are looking to use a more friendlier, commercially viable emulator instead. Now, one that comes to mind is SEN64 or CEN64. This is a very accurate N64 emulator that's been in active development. It also uses a three clause BSD license, and I think it would be a better fit overall for the Polymega. Now, Polymega has enough horsepower, in my opinion, to run a accurate N64 emulator, such as SEN64. It runs Intel Coffee Lake, architecture, which should be enough to run the more demanding N64 emulation experience. And overall, I think the accuracy would be quite good. Now, Play Magi admits that 100% compatibility is simply not on the table with the add-on module, and they're aiming for 90% at launch of the module, which will be very interesting to see what that looks like. Now, 90% is still a quite high number, and I would expect that would encapsulate the majority of N64 or the popular N64 games to run under that 90% kind of bubble. But the problem with Nintendo 64 emulation, as we know, as we've seen with the Nintendo Switch Online, is that it can be very game specific due to the complexity of N64, its architecture, its programmable microcode, it can really cause headaches in certain scenarios. But still, the base hardware, the base Polymega hardware should be powerful enough to run perhaps a low-level emulation of the RSP and RDP custom processors, and this can really bring the accuracy where it needs to be. But as of right now, we don't really know when the N64 add-on module will be available, but this is definitely exciting news, and I... I would probably say to expect it around Q2 of 2022, but that is absolutely my speculation and guess. I have no idea about when we can expect to see this. Now, to be honest, I'm pretty excited about this N64 add-on because I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. And it's also a bit of a risk from the team to really step into this world because many other people have tried to clone the N64 and offer a clone console and they've just failed. There's always been some hurdles or hiccups along the way. So Polymega seems like they're kind of really taking the right approach here. They definitely have the hardware to do this, to pull this off, but it will definitely be interesting to see how this works in execution. Now, to be honest, I really like the Polymega system. I know it's had a lot of criticism over the years, things like the price, and I do think the, the Polymega system is overpriced. There's obviously been a lot of delays with the system, but it is great to see the system finally coming out. And look, overall, I'm, I think the system is good. I love the operating system that it runs, and I love the ease of use and the simplicity of it. But look, at the end of the day, it's something that I've had sitting in my entertainment system since last year, since I made that video back in you know 2020. So I'm a fan of the hardware. I do think that the... The hardware is overpriced, especially when you compare it to something like an Xbox Series S, which literally runs rings around it as far as what it can do emulation wise. But that, you know, that's a different comparison altogether. But look, I will be picking up the N64 module when it comes out and I'll be definitely taking a close look at the emulation. But for now, this video is more of a heads up to say, look, we are finally seeing the first ever N64 clone system on the market. And I am hopeful and I am wondering whether this is the beginning of many more to come.
but we are going to leave it here for this episode. I definitely want to hear your thoughts in the comments below about the move that Polymega is bringing out a N64 clone add-on for their Polymega system. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this episode, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.